my fingers <coughs> is continuously born, I don't know why. Uh, otherwise, the soul stays the same. Anyways, so around the same time that this game was proposed, somebody asked, can we reverse the game of life? I.e., going from that glider on the right, can we essentially move backwards and go to the glider on the left? Well, as it turns out, we can, but it's fairly hard. Uh, for example, suppose we start with a simple pattern, which everyone who has played video games should work us, uh, and we try to find a particular predecessor of it. Well, here's one that you'd have to look through of the actual predecessors of it. Here's a few more. Here are a few more. And if we zoom out a bit, here are all of them in a bounty box radius 1. There are 2,680 of them. It's quite possible to uh, find all of them. That's not my exchange gift, luckily. Um, anyway, so suppose we rephrase the question and ask instead, can computers reverse the game of life? Well, as it turns out, they can, but certainly not using brute force method. Suppose we go back to this pattern, uh, we have to look through this number of cells if we just try to brute force all possible leaves, which mathematically pronounces only as a very large number. <laughs> How large is this number? Here's a comparison of three handling objects. The one on the right, right there, is in sphere of size you would need if you wanted to print out each of the test cases on a one inch by one inch piece of sanded office paper. The thing in the center is the sun. <laughs> 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 and lastly, there is a single pixel right about there, uh, which is here. <laughs> well, besides, um, this screen isn't large enough. Anyways, so there have to be better methods, and luckily there are. Uh, the first of them was published around 1970 by a guy named John Woods, and it goes like this. Take a pattern and split it up into cells. Then, for each of those cells, find the predecessors to that in 3 by 3 square. Then, start joining all the cells, one after another, until you've joined all of the cells. Once you've done that, you should have a list of all the possible predecessors. Um, now, this is good for many patterns, but it's, it's bad for others. Uh, specifically big patterns. I, I don't go into the reasons why, because I don't have enough time, but it led to this guy named J. Horvath Dupart, so you can find a second method, which I call the works method. It goes like this. Take a pattern and split it up into rows. Then, find predecessors to each of those rows using any method you like. Then, merge the rows together, and you should have a list of all the possible predecessors. Uh, this is only good for certain types of patterns, so I don't recommend using it, but the merge operation in step three uh, is particularly useful. Now, a few things about merging. Uh, it requires no y function evaluations, which are actually rather slow. Uh, it's fairly fast, as long as you keep the sizes of the stacks that you originally get are about the same. And about two months ago, I was wondering, um, could you possibly make a predecessor fire using only merge operations? Well, you can, but it's a bit tricky. To do a this algorithm, which I call quad woods, uh, you start with a pattern, split them out into four squares, split each of those squares up into four squares, and so on until each of those squares has become cells. Then find predecessors to each of those cells in three by three square, and start merging everything together in clumps of four. Once you've done that and written about 300 lines of computer code, uh, you should have a list of all the possible predecessors. Now, this is quite fast, but Anyone should be able to see that, and there's a problem. It doesn't work for a general rectangle. Now, there is a solution, but it's fairly interesting because it relates to square packing. You have to split the rectangle into squares of certain sizes, uh, and then merge them, all the parts together. Anyways, um, since I've, I think I'm running out of time, here's some misleading statistics of just two patterns. Uh, as you can see in each case, quadrants uh, Podwoods was about 10 times faster than the other algorithms. And that's all I have time for right now. Thank you very much. Uh, I learned a lot of stuff out in this talk, and for more details, you can reach my blog at nbitford.wordpress.com. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Neil.